Welcome everybody. My name is Aaron Jeske. I'm here representing Pinnacle Technology Partners. We're here at BioIT World 2024 in Boston, Mass. I'm here today to talk to you about developing your AI ML practice inside of your organization and tell you a little bit about some of the lessons that we've learned in the last six years of developing practices for our customers. Uh, we are a healthcare and life sciences focused computational engineering consulting agency. Really what that means is we're here to help you develop your computational platforms to deliver your science. Part of what PTP has learned over the last six years is what are the things that you can do to accelerate your machine learning environment and what you can do to detract from your success. Uh, we started six years ago after being at reInvent 2018, where we saw the uh, Deep Racer platform is pretty unique in way to expose not only your scientific partners, but also your business to the capabilities of what machine learning can do for you inside of AWS. And what Deep Racer is, it's a remote control car with all the remote pulled out. Uh, computers attached to it and some vision control systems is uh, slapped on top of that. And you go through the process of reinforcement learning and going into your environment uh, and training that car how to get around a track fast enough. You're doing this all abstracted in your compute platform. You download that, you put it into a car. And we had a really great event six years ago to uh, to show, show this off. So what is the Rational AI Architects? It's really a first principles approach to fair data. Uh, but before we get into all of that, I really want to set a grounding statement. Part of what I like to do with any project that I'm delivering on is, what can we always track back to? And there's this great quote, it's a couple centuries old, but I find that it's still very relevant to delivering a, a successful environment today. It's a he who hurts more than he needs to hurts before he needs to. It really, when I look at that as a grounding statement, I look at that as what can we always track back to to say, what defines success? How can we avoid the stress of, of the uncertainty about delivering in an, our environment? So many of us are approached by our leaders saying, we need to have an ML practice. We need to be participating in Gen AI. But you don't know necessarily, do we have the technology? Do we have the data sets? Do we have the people that even make that, make that successful? Let's remove that anxiety and go back to that first principles approach. And a lot of times you're going to hear as you're going off and exploring different consulting partners or different technologies that allow you to accelerate into Gen AI, let's say, specifically, you're gonna hear a lot about fair data, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. And absolutely, those principles are very relevant to anything that you're doing. They will drive you towards success. However, when we start to go take that first principles approach, that grounding statement approach, what can we do from day one to say, how can we have success even if we have a variant on success? Certainly you can go along and find uh, a, a project that delivers everything you need but so many of us know that that's, that's not the reality of the situation. Often you're having to make changes along the way. So what are the defining things that we can take from those fair data principles and at day one and still drive success? So let's take a look at findable. What can we do with findable and abstract that down to your first principles approach? Really what findable is trying to say is that data lineage. And you're going to hear so many folks talk about your data needs to be prepared and identified and tagged. I think it's more than that. You need to understand who gave you that data. Maybe there's a CRO that is able to deliver more high quality data because they have the right instruments. If you look at the data only as being relevant to a specific experiment you have, you might not be taking in the full context of it. How can you pair that back and start to understand the full data lineage, not just making that searchable by your team members, abstracting that out so that you have uh, the full understanding of what qualifies that data. And I think that naturally leads to accessibility, atomic data. So now you may have an understanding of why your data is there and who gave it to you, what instrumentation may have been generating it, but you're going to iterate on that data. You're going to have transformations. You're going to have some form of ETL performed on that data. But if you don't keep that atomic data, if you, let's say three years from now, you have a new scientist come on your team and that, uh, that individual is able to identify how they can improve your process. 
do you want to go back and potentially process petabytes of data? That's not going to be financially responsible, nor would it be necessarily what is going to drive you towards success when, when it comes to your research. When you keep that atomic level data, you can always go back and check it again. And if you, if you take that in concert with your, the findable aspects of things, you're able to pair your, the, the tagging and the, not the knowledge that you have about your environment from its data lineage and pair that in uh, along with your accessibility to go back and re-identify data that is going to be potentially informative or maybe something that you negated, something that you say is no longer relevant. So it's about when having atomic data allows you to identify, readily identify your relevant and irrelevant data. In interoperable, this is a tough one. What we're identifying here is, can this data be identified and used by different people and different software inside of your environment? I feel that's pretty close to first principles uh, as, as FAIR data is going to get. Reusable is the most critical component when you're looking at FAIR data principles and trying to pare that back down to a first principles approach. When you have your data be truly reusable, it's not only going to be available to different team members of your environment, it's also going to have the availability as they iterate on that data. It is going to allow them, when they see a change in their methodologies, if that data is truly reusable, truly identifiable, you can go back and consume that data again. You can go back and identify that data as irrelevant or relevant. The reusability aspects of, uh, in your first principles approach is critical. I hope that gives you some insight on how we apply a rational AI architect against the FAIR data principles. If you want to hear any more, or if you're looking to work with us at all, uh, we offer a funded, well-architected review that gives you great insight and in how we can apply that rational AI architect approach into your environment. Thank <music> you.